I heard a rumor that Debbie was going to carve a wax today and do some gridding, which is a technique that is kind of essential for symmetrical waxes that are hand carved. Hi, Deb. Hello. Oh, there you are. What you working on? So I have this little figure eight, sculptural figure eight or infinity over a band. And the center diamond here is going to be integrated into the figure eight and then the little side diamonds will be in the band extending out from the center. Ooh. So it's a very symmetrical ring. So I'm going to start off by measuring my width here and marking it on my wax tube. Once I get the blank, I'll be able to find my center line. So this is the uh, truly the old-fashioned way. You're just cutting it with a saw jeweler saw you're not even using a miter box or anything no this is easier for me to do this so the interesting thing about a wax blade is that it's twisted so you, it's cutting in both directions oh yeah it's cutting when you push down or when and when you push it so it's real important to go around and around and not just cut from one side through to the other that way you keep um, can stay on your line better I'm gonna sand my Side flat. So you've got this kind of a, a grid sandpaper. Yeah, this is really good for wax. Cause oh, because it, it falls through yeah. and doesn't clog up as bad. Yeah. Nice. It works really quickly. And you're comparing it. Comparing the straight lines to the walls of the, the band. So. Right. Now you're finding my center line. Finding center, okay. Putting your dividers on your caliper so that you have an interval that is the right size. Or the center stone. And then you're twirling it about to make a little circle yeah. right off your center point. Right. So now you have a Now I have the center point of my design. I went to the center of the diamond Yes. and I found the outside edge of my figure eight. Okay. And that's all I did. I just am marking you marked it. Yeah, so I know where it ends. Yeah. Well, that's good. Okay. Wow. Okay. So are you marking that all the way around? Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. so. so having extra reference lines is actually beneficial. Yeah, very. They, they eventually go away as you work the wax, but that helps keep you oriented. The other thing I like to do is keep things uh, keep a square side or a flat side until the very end. So if this was a tapering shank, you would um, taper it at the end. I would taper it at the end, yes. and that, that also helps me keep a uh, square uh, thing. So now I have to figure out how I'm going to do this. Little, which which part? This little curve here, because it's not really round. It's kind of more oval, and it's very S-shaped. Oh yes, you're right. And it's tapered on one end and kind of full in the center. So, you know, it's again, it's about, this is why I don't need to do math, because actually it works out pretty good. <laughs> yeah. If you just use your, your dividers. Your dividers. Yeah. And I'm going to use all, what the center line as my reference point on that. And I'm just going to go off of it. And so when you have symmetry like this and you have opposite things on opposite sides of the ring, you do the opposite, one opposite set and then another opposite set instead of two on one side. Wow, good old Sharpie. Yeah, I love Sharpies. Okay. But the problem with wax is that they don't. They kind of get bound up in the yeah. wax. Okay, and the other thing I'm going to do is kind of look at my negative spaces and see if I'm, I'm off a little, which I kind of am a little bit there. Okay, so there's the drawing. You've got all the essential things marked onto the wax. And now you're going in with a, a slow speed with your flex shaft and a little cutting burr. What, what do those teeth look like? Let's see it. Ooh, I like that. It's got a top and an edge. Very aggressive though. Yes, that's why I'm going slow. Actually, when you begin working on waxes like this, you often use files. Um, 
and just do it all much more slowly until you really truly understand the nature of this material and your tools because the mistakes will happen quickly. So you go in from one side and do a bit and you turn it and go to the next side and do a bit. Back and forth, back and forth. Yes? Yes. Okay. I like that tool. Can I have one? You bet. <laughs> Yeah, I'm starting kind of outside my line, and then as I trim, I go into it more. This wax is hard, has a lot of plastic in it, and melts at a higher temperature. Pretty durable stuff. I start every carved wax with the goal that I won't have to add anything back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make it very often. <laughs> a little needle file. Is that a half, yeah, it's half round? A half round small noodle file. I mean, taking away the rotary tool marks because they're, they're pretty aggressive teeth, and so now you're smoothing it up. Okay, so now I will trim my little edges here and here, and I won't run the risk of running into the the shank material. Okay, so art is prerogative. <laughs> oh yes, what's that? I've decided that I really like the idea of putting a square shank on it and I might leave a shoulder here. Ooh, for a delineation of dimension. Yeah, and where the, where the imagined uh, figure eight goes under the shank. So. Uh -huh. so originally it was a round ring, but I'm thinking it's going to be prettier as a square ring. Okay, so now you're using a classic half round wax file, double ended, yeah. coarser on one end than the other. That's like a basic, basic so, tool. So I did grid the, the sides of the ring. Let's see that. So that I know, so I, so I am filing to a, a line here. So I'm, this is my thickness. Or, uh, Go for about two millimeters there for starters? A millimeter and a half. I don't know if it's two. Oh, right. So you still have a centered to... line at the top of the wax and you have it at the back of the shank. So I do, you could... but I'm going to take that one off here in a minute. But you can reconnect it right. if you want. So to. I always have a baseline to go back to. Right. So you're never working in one area for very long. You have to go do the commensurate area on the other side. And then you have to look and make sure that your angles are even. Your Isn't tapers are you know, something going off. Yep. One side is lower than the other side, so oh, yeah. you just really have to look at those little. Um, so your thickness isn't uniform. All right. Okay. You've got a slope. I do. Okay. And almost everyone does because they're either right-handed or left-handed, right. and they're going to stroke more. Right. Okay. Being right-handed, we tend to use our left hand as a little vice. A little holding vice, and the right hand is more of the tool manipulator. The left hand is extremely important. And now I will look at that. Um, take the level of this down a little bit, and there. See, we may lose the shoulder when I do that. Mm -hmm. The level doesn't have to change much in order to give a lot of dimension and really have that center stone be more important. Hmm. So that's a little file that um, has a file only on the end and they, they often are bent on the end so that you can access areas. Uh, you can get them in different grits. This one's pretty coarse. Okay, so I might take the level down more, but I'm going to do the other side before I do that so that they'll be... A little match? Hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully match. <laughs> Oh, it's got a little triangle edge? Mm -hmm. But it's also flat. I was looking for a flat side, but that's oh, right. a little bit coarse. Really. Right, and so it has a little curve, so you can get in there. Nice. A lot of the carving is actually scraping and filing. Defining edges, defining details. was able to clean that line up 
Yeah. And give it a little bit of a curve. Right. Defining the little bits of wax. Of course, whatever you put in wax, you have to be able to clean up in metal. So sometimes recesses and corners and such become problematic. So Debbie's going to think about that, too, as she makes this. Try to anticipate cleanup problems in the metal. Now you've got a little bit of scotch bright. Mm -hmm. and that's helping to just see things better. Take off some edges. Out of this. Now a little WD-40 to kind of polish the surface of the wax. Also when we show a wax, sometimes people will say, oh I love this, but I want this detail a little softer, a little taller, a little more defined, a little less defined. So we, we can do all those adjustments in the wax model. I love it. So I have a little bud burr here. Bud burr is kind of a tapered, pointy to a wider, like a little bud. Oh, did you go to a setting burr? No, I just got, went to a round ball oh, burr. a ball burr. Okay. I just want to open the hole. All right, now it's now I'm seeing it. You seeing it? I'm seeing it. I can see it. That's gonna look great. Mm -hmm. Oh, once again, I get my dividers. I measure from the center to the top edge. Center to the top edge. A little mark there. So you're a little long on one side. Yeah. So you, to the bottom edge. Yeah. So I'm so that's almost a millimeter long. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Oh yeah, the mark right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So you don't see it as a millimeter length when you're looking down on it, but as it's measured out, that's what it is. So you'll do that on the other side and then yeah. make your adjustments. And then bring this one up. I can see right now it's a little. Place the diamonds on top of here with sticky wax so the client can take a look at it and decide whether she wants them tapering oh. large to small towards the center stone which makes the center stone kind of look bigger or uh -huh. if she wants them large to small tapering away from the center stone so that they just graduate down. So your setting method for the small stones is not yet in the wax, which would be no. little kind of faux beads? Yep. Okay, and you haven't really tapered the shank, or have uh, you? No, I, I narrowed it back down to four millimeters. It was a little wider than four millimeters, so I've got it at four millimeters. I kind of like four millimeters with this combination of stones. Okay. With this, it might be nice to taper it down to three. A wax carver's work is never done, however. You can always take it to another level. <laughs>